everyone. Thank you for joining me. I'm Kelly Manzoni. For today's class, we're going to need our stick mobility bundle, the two long sticks and one short stick. If you don't have stick mobility, you could use a wooden dowel or broomstick. We also need either a pillow for your knee or a folded up towel and then access to a side wall. Today's class, we're going to focus on our strength portion for shoulders, mid back, and hips. So getting started, we're going to use our short stick just to warm up and we're going to go into our stick mobility horse stance. So we're wider than hip width and we're going to soften into the knees and take the tailbone under so you can feel the front line of your body light up. Taking your short stick in front, you're going to take your palms to the outside and push in. We're going to go into a gentle pendulum. I love doing these for priming for overhead pressing or just daily warm up for any activity. And as you take your arm from side to side, I want you to gently push up and your bicep should go in line with the ear. We're just going to do a few more and then we're going to get into some kayaking. One more on each side. Perfect. You're going to take the stick to your right hip. I'm aware that the camera flips me, so even though this is my left side, I'm going to call it my right side. Maintaining our horse stance, pushing about 30% tension into the stick, you're going to go into your kayaking forward. In a moment, we're going to allow ourselves to move the T-spine, but right now we're going to keep our hips still and really focus on the shoulders. Now from here, I want you to add a little bit of rotation through the torso. Perfect, so I'm pushing back, up, and then forward. So my hips are gonna to continue to face forward, but now the eyes are gonna follow as I work into the T-spine. Let's do four more. One, oh, sorry, two, there goes my puppy, knocking over my board, three, on four. Now we're gonna go into reverse, Take it up and back. So this is very similar to the backstroke. Just like we did with the kayaking forward, we're gonna keep our eyes and chest forward at first. And in a moment, we're gonna add in that rotation through the T-spine. Let's do three more here. One, two, three. Now on the fourth, you're gonna keep the hip bones facing forward but now add that rotation through the upper body. Inhaling, exhaling. I practice a lot of diaphragmatic breathing, so throughout class, if you would like, you could close your mouth, rest the tongue on the roof of your mouth, and nasal breathe. So we have four more. One, up and back, two, three, and four. Take a second, come out of the horse stance, shake it up. Now we're going to place our feet just about hip width apart, palms facing forward towards your body, and then you're going to pull apart on the stick, come up overhead, and now I want you to think of lifting up and out of your ribs and your hip line. So this right hand, I'm going to push down, or pull down I should say, a little bit. Tailbone is tucked under, come through center, now the right arm or excuse me, left arm is gonna pull down. And again, up and over to the other side. Now you can widen your stance a little bit to go deeper into the stretch, similar to our bow and arrow. Through center, up and over to the other side. Come back through center, gently lower the stick. Now we're gonna work into our tricep for a moment. Taking your stick into the left hand, I'm just gonna show you from that side angle. So I want your palm right in line with the base of your neck. Your right hand is going to come back and gently grab the stick and then you're going to pull down with just a little bit of tension. This left elbow should be pointing upward towards the ceiling. Rib cage is closed. Again, watch your alignment with your pelvis so the tailbone is under. And what we're going to do is we're going to push with the right hand out towards the left and angle upward for a moment. Good, come through center. One more time, gentle push out with that right arm coming across towards the left. And through center, take a moment, shake it out. And then we're gonna switch hands. So now the left hand is the lower hand. And we're focusing now on that right tricep. 
Notice if that left shoulder is really rotating forward. Try to take it down and back as you pull down on the stick. Again, in your stance, we're gonna add a little bit of that bow with the upper body. Perfect. That left hand now is coming across towards the right. And then we slowly come through center. Let's do one more. Push, elbow is back, angle, look up. Again, focus on your alignment and your breathing, and then come through center and gently release. Take a moment to roll out your shoulders. We're gonna take ourselves now to the ground with a prone position with one single long stick to warm up our lumbar spine and our hips. So you're gonna take the long stick, come to your belly, take a second, shake it out, and I want you to take your arms out into a T-shape. So the feedback from the stick really helps to maximize this stretch. This is a dynamic warm-up that I do often. Now I'm gonna take my palms face down and then push the stick, like crush the stick. So I'm pressing in with both the right and left hand. I'm gonna lift my right knee and as I open up that hip, my eyes are gonna look over to the right as my foot goes over towards the left. So left side, bend the knee, open that hip, and the connection with the stick helps us to kind of keep our shoulders down towards the floor. So I want you to go at your own pace. If I'm going too fast, you could always slow this down. And this is, feels so good. Again, bend, breathe, push into the stick, we're gonna do four more. Inhaling and exhaling. You'll notice after a few that you're allowed to go a little bit deeper into the stretch, your body get, gets used to it. We got one more. Come through the center. Take a moment, slide the hands in, and stretch back. Now we're gonna locate our other tall stick and go into a hip series before we get into our strength work. We're going to start with the left leg forward. Excuse me, I'll go with my right leg forward. So start with the left leg forward. Take your sticks now right in line with your hips. I want you to hold up nice and high so you get a little bit of traction through the upper body. Chest is open and now we're going to slide our back right knee a little bit further back and then scoop the tailbone under. So you should feel a dynamic stretch through that right hip flexor. From here, anchor with the ball of the back foot and lift the knee off the ground on your next exhale. And then inhale, lower the knee back down. I'm just gonna go on a diagonal for a moment so you can see from the side view. Again, lengthen. I'm gonna engage that glute, pushing down through the ball of the foot, eyes forward and then lower the knee. Inhale, exhale, press back, straight leg, squeeze through your seat, and again, lower the knee. One more. Now hold here, driving down about 20%, maybe 30% into the sticks. I want you to do a slight hinge forward, lift the belly off the top of that left thigh, hold. Now, as we slide the palms up, we lift and elevate through the chest, and now we're gonna add a little bit of rotation. So your right side is gonna come across, inward towards the left. And again, I'm pushing down into the ground gently, breathing, and at any time you could lower the knee if this is uncomfortable for you. Let's do one more on each side. Nice, through center. And then we're gonna lower the knee. Have that, that side wall ready. Going into our hamstring stretch on this left side before we go into our knee down lunge on the right side. So we're taking our sticks against the wall, creating those train tracks, which give us a lot of feedback. And they allow us to keep our hip line nice and even and maintain the length through the back. So I'm gonna take my left leg forward flexing the foot. Again, I like to turn my shin in, my back shin in just a little bit. 
Now, pepping the shoulders, eyes forward on that diagonal, gently hinging forward. From here, we're going to come out of the stretch, flatten the foot, lift the belly, squeeze that back seat, and then pull back and lengthen. So I don't want you to compromise your form. If you need to work a little bit higher up, that's totally fine. And if you're nice and flexible and mobile and you want to go deeper into the stretch and you can maintain your alignment, by all means, please do. Let's do one more. Flex, draw back, and then slowly place the left foot down. Now we're going to do the same series on the right side. So right leg is forward. Our sticks again are going to be right in line with our hips, holding up nice and high. A little bit of attraction with that upper body. Hold for a moment. Now again, we want to be mindful of our position. So I'm anchored with that back foot, but you can always go top of the foot down, plantar flex or dorsal flex, whatever you're comfortable with. And I want you to scoop that tailbone under, press the hip forward, breathe. And now we're going to anchor the ball of the back foot, elevate that knee, find that length, and then inhale, lower the knee to the ground once again. Exhale, push back through that heel. So what's going to happen is that back left leg is going to become really active. Let's do two more. Push back, squeeze. Good. Gently lower. One more. Hold. Just like we did on the other side, we're going to add a little bit of that rotation. So this left arm is going to come across towards the right. And I want you to be mindful that you're not swaying the hips. Start square and focus on the rotation from the upper body and then open out. I've got again about 20-30% of tension pushing down into the floor. If it bothers you to have that knee elevated by all means you can place it back down to the ground. Inhale, exhale, proud chest and then ease through center, lower your knee back down. Taking it to our side wall once again. Going into our hamstring stretch now with the right leg. Take a moment to find your positioning. So again, we want to be mindful of the alignment with our hips. I again like to take top of the foot down of that back side and then turn my shin in just a little bit. So before you even hinge, create those train tracks, pack those shoulders, engage those lats and then hinge forward gently. Lift the toes, so think of the big toe coming back towards your forehead, and then you could flatten the foot, come out of it, squeeze into that back seat, pull back. Like we did on the other side, depending on your mobility and flexibility, you could go a little bit deeper into your stretch. If you have to work higher up, that is okay. Let's do one more here. Pull back, flex, excellent, hold, take a breath, and then we slowly come out of it. Taking our sticks now, we're going to come to stand, and just take a moment to shake out. Using our side wall, we're going to start our strength portion going into a deadlift with row. So we have two row variations in our workout today. You're going to place your sticks against the wall wider than your hip width and you're just going to maybe step out a foot to about 16 inches or so away from the wall. Feet are going to be hip width apart and you don't want your hands up too high. So I'm sliding them down kind of on a diagonal where I hinge forward. They're going to be right about here and you're going to pull going into the back. We're going to push back in our hip hinge with about 80, 70 to 80 percent of our strength. And I want you to apply that pull with the row 70, 80 percent of your strength. Standing tall, take a moment, shoulders down and back. Slowly begin to hip hinge. And as you're hip hinging, push back into the wall. Lift the belly, back is flat, chest is open. Now pull. Squeeze, stay in tension as you lengthen the arms, drive through the legs, come back up, stand. Again, 
pushing back into the wall. Hinge slowly. Remember, it's not a squat. It's a hip hinge. Row, pull. Right? Get yourself to shake. Really make that connection. Stay in that tension and slowly come up. Excellent. Push back again into the wall. Hip hinge, core lifted. Everything is on. Right? We're barefoot for a reason or in minimal shoes. I really want you to feel that connection to the ground. Right? You're nice and rooted. Posterior chain is lighting up. Pull. This is a great primer for deadlifts of any variation. And drive up. We have two more. Eyes forward. Begin to push back. You can even feel a little bit of tricep kicking in too. Pull. Squeeze. Shoulders down and back. Stay in that tension. And drive up. One more. All right? Hinge. Now, 90% of your strength. I'm already shaking. I want you shaking. Pull. Tension, tension. Stay in it. Lengthen, stay in that tension, stay in the tension as you drive up, and then relax. Excellent. Take a moment, shake it out. Next exercise, we're going to use just one stick. Coming down, and we're going to go into a half kneeling overhead press. You could use your long stick. I decided I'm going to swap that out and use my short stick. In the kneeling press, if this bothers you, you could do it from standing or half kneeling. So I'm going to take the tops of the feet down. Watch your alignment with your pelvis. So we want to keep the rib cage closed and we want to make sure that we're not pressing forward through our hip line. Taking your short stick, wider, a um, little bit wider than shoulder width, eyes forward. We're going to pull apart on the stick as we lower. And as we press, we're gonna crush the stick, pushing into the stick, overhead, chin stays neutral, pull apart, lower the stick back down to the start position. Push, press, overhead, create that tension, pull apart, and lower, almost like you're doing a pull up. Excellent. Again, push. You should be shaking. So 70, 80% of your strength. Watching that alignment. Pull. We're going to do three more. Push into the stick. Press. I love this again as a primer, especially when I'm doing a lot of circular training, swinging maces and clubs, or <laughs> kettlebell work, of course. Push. Chin neutral. Keep that tension. Pull. Pull, almost like you're at that lat pull down machine. Activate that mid back. Let's do one more. Push. Excellent. Stay connected. Now really pull apart all of your strength. Go slow. Don't rush it. Excellent. Take a moment. Shake it up. Coming to all fours in the quadruped position. This is one of my favorite shoulder strengthening exercises. Especially if you find that like you've got a sleepy scapula or you can't quite activate that lat. We're going to work on a clock system and I know the camera flips and I might mess up. So I'm going to call 12 o'clock, then we're going to go on a diagonal, then we're going to call it arm directly in line with the shoulder. We're going to be doing just about 10 second holds to really build strength. I'll demonstrate first before we get started. So I'm in the quadruped position taking my right arm forward. I'm going to angle that stick a little bit on a diagonal and the wrist is going to be in line with my shoulder. Lifting the belly, maintaining that length, eyes down. I'm going to push down at 12 o'clock for about 10 seconds. Lift the stick, go out on a diagonal, same thing, push down and then directly out to the side. Once you're working, at least at 70% of your strength. So, here we go. Lift the belly, find that alignment. Remember that stick is angled. I've got my clock, good. So push down into the stick. Breathe, I'm already shaking. We've got five more seconds. Push, push, push. Excellent. Lift, hold for a moment. 
Take it on a diagonal. All right, clock going. Pack that shoulder. Feel that connection behind the scapula to the lat. Watch again your alignment with your lower back. Lift that belly. Press, press. Good. Elevate, hold. Take it out to directly out to the side in line with the shoulder. This one's my favorite out of the three. Get ready. Pack that shoulder. Engage that lat and press down. Hold. Breathe. Stay with it. Almost there. Perfect. Relift. Take it back on that diagonal. Adjust if needed. And push. 70 to 80% of your strength. Fire it up. Almost there. Stay with it. Excellent. Elevate. Take it back to 12 o'clock. Find that position. Push. Fatigue that muscle. We have 10 second hold. Breathing. Drive down. Four, three, two, and relax. Ah, feels alive. <laughs> now we're gonna go over to the other side. Set yourself up, grab a sip of water if you need it. Then we have the stick now in our left hand. Remember it's angled in, shoulder alignment. Lifting the belly, top of the feet down, I prefer, but you can always anchor with the balls of your feet if you like that better. And let's begin and drive down. 10 second hold. I want you to kind of take some notes so you can feel the difference between your right and left side, your dominant or less dominant side. Almost there, perfect. Elevate, take the stick out on that diagonal, get ready, and push. Breathe. 70 to 80% of your strength, driving down. As you can see, I am shaking. Almost there, push, push, push. Again, watch your technique, lift, and now we're taking it directly out to the side. Reset if needed, and now push. Pack that shoulder. I have a lot of hypermobility in my joints, and this is one that really kind of helps me to build some stability around my shoulder girdle. We're almost there. And elevate. Now we go back on that diagonal. Again, pack that shoulder, engage that lat, push down, squeeze. Scan your body, make sure you're not shifting your hips over to one side. Stay centered. Push, push, push. Almost there. And lift. Now, 12 o'clock. Angle the stick, there we go, last one, push, 10 seconds on the clock, 80% of your strength, 5 seconds, almost there, and recover. Well done. <laughs> so take a moment, grab some water. Now I know our upper body has been working. We have one more exercise before we stand up to go into our hips. You're going to need your side wall. Obviously, I can't turn around, so I'm going to just demonstrate both sides on the same side here. You're going to take your short stick or your long stick against your side wall. With your left hand, we're going to push into the wall as we perform a row from the high plank position. We're going to do four to six. So I'm going to have you go for six, but if those of you that find six is too much, you could do four reps. You could also modify and lower the knees to the floor and do a row if the high plank is uncomfortable. So take your stance. You're in your high plank. You want to be mindful, right? So that tailbone is tucked under so you can light up. Palm right below that shoulder line. Now we're not going to rotate. We're going to pull and we're still pushing out into the wall as we row. Inhaling and exhaling. Keeping your alignment with your hips. So you have three more. Notice if you're starting to pipe up your hip line. Remember, we wanna stay connected, we wanna stay nice and parallel, so there's no shifting. You should have about one more left. 
And then once you finish the six, take a second, breathe, set yourself up on the other side. To create that stable base, once again, the palm is right below that shoulder line. Now you're gonna be working your right side. So I'm gonna stay right where I am. Wide position with the legs. Tuck that tailbone under, light up your front line. Activate that lat, and we already got that working before. And row, pull. So as you're pulling, at the same time, you're pushing out into the wall. So four to six reps, you're probably just about to start your fourth rep. Again, tune into your body, notice your alignment, modify if needed, and you should be wrapping up right about now. Perfect. And then short stick to the ground. We're going to use that in just a moment. We're going to go into some Captain Morgans for our hips before we come back down to the ground and go into 90-90 and some shin box. If you have that towel nearby, when we get to our 90-90 and shin box, you could use it as a bolster to sit on. So taking the uh, right arm forward at 12 o'clock and the left arm out to the side around three o'clock, our sticks again are gonna angle in. Pack your shoulders, stand nice and tall, proud chest. Take the inside arch of your left foot to the right stick. Now I'm gonna pull up to hip height and open the door going into that Captain Morgan Stay connected, lower the foot and leg, and then drive up, that knee is open, and then slowly close that door and lower. So let's do two more. Push down into the sticks, drive down, breathe, focus on your alignment, excellent. Flex that foot, really pull slowly, Close that door and lower. One more on this side. Pull, drive up, pause, open. Let's hold this one for five count. Push into the stick, hold one, two, three, four. On five, lower, drive up, pause, hold for five. One, two, three, four. On five, Close the door, lower, and begin to shake it out. Excellent, changing size. Got my uh, coach Maggie Mae over here, my cockapoo puppy hanging out. So uh, one stick at 12 o'clock, other stick out to the side, standing tall. Now the right foot is gonna go to the inside of our 12 o'clock stick. Pull up, open lower. So that again, that foot is staying flexed. Now I realize I'm kind of talking to a camera and I feel like I'm a little off because the stick is blocking me. <laughs> so I apologize if my form is slightly off, but I want to make sure that I could not have that stick right in front of my face. And open, lower, we're gonna do one more where we have our hold. Close the door. Excellent. Okay, here we go. Pull up, open out, push. Five second hold. One, two, three, four. On five, stay in tension, lower. Drive up, push, knee back, hold. One, two, three, four. On five. Close, and now gently lower. Excellent. Shake it out. Those are tough. They are fantastic though. And before we get to our stretching portion, I'm gonna do a little bit of 90-90. If you find you're uncomfortable in 90-90, you could take it in your shin box. So I've got the right leg forward, left leg back. Here is, I'm just gonna slide this way. Here is the 90-90. Back ankle directly in line with the knee. Front ankle in line with the knee. 
And if you need that towel to sit on, by all means, you could do so. And now we're taking the short stick in front. We're gonna pull apart, up overhead, right? Chin is neutral. And as the stick passes the forehead, push into the stick. Keeping the stick at chest height, still pushing into the stick. Now I'm gonna rotate into that open side, pull apart, sitting tall, push into the stick as you lower back to chest height. Then we're gonna rotate now that we're squared off once again, just one more, pull apart, chin neutral. I've got my outside of my front leg pressing down the inside of that back leg pushing down good come through center pull apart about 20 percent breathing only lift to where you can and then push into the stick perfect take a moment lower the stick hands to the floor behind you and just alternate so your shoulders are down away from your ears. Think of taking the knee directly in front, 12 o'clock. Let's do one more on each side before we switch. Good. Now, other side. Again, if you're uh, not comfortable with 90-90, you could do this uh, in your sh um, shin box position. So scan your body, ankle, knee, ankle, and knee. Square off with the chest. I can already tell the side's a little bit tighter on me today. So we're gonna pull apart on the stick, right above head, right? Watch the rib cage. Push into the stick. As we push, come through center. Good, pull apart. Right up overhead. Excellent. Push into the stick, chest height once again. Rotate. When you square off, pull apart. Activate that posterior line. Again, scan your body. Notice where you compensate. As the stick passes over the forehead, push in. Last one. Rotate. Pull apart. Breathing. Maintaining your alignment. And then take a second, push into the stick, hold, and release. Well done. Small stick to the side. Take the hands behind. And then again, work in now a little rotation. Just a few. Let's do one more on each side. And then we're going to stand up with a single stick. Perfect. Okay. Coming up into bow and arrow. We're going to do our bow and arrow with the crossover. So if your stick is in your right hand, you're going to take your left leg, cross the right, excuse me, left foot over the right, and your feet should be gripping the ground, right? Inner thighs are going to squeeze in towards one another. You're going to take your stick a little bit further out than your top left hand, thumb down, bottom right hand is going to find that sticker. So this top arm is going to pull as that bottom arm presses. So the crossover adds a little bit more intensity into that hip flexor. Hold. Come out of it. And let's do this one more time. I'm going to lead with the hips first, then push out with that bottom arm and pull with that top arm. Tailbone is going to come under. And now, since it's the second one, I'm going to angle and look upward towards the ceiling, getting a little bit into that front line. And now slowly come out of it. Uncross. You're going to take your stick now in the center, but you could always go off center if you're uncomfortable. Your top left hand thumb is going to face up. Right hand is going to come across close to the body, finding that uh, sticker. And now I'm going to press out to the left and pull with that top arm. So feet are gripping the ground. Belly is lifted, length through the spine. And as you can see, 
the chin is going to clear far over the bicep and the shoulder. I don't want you to have the hips moving, right? So the hips are nice and squared. Again, pull back. I'm going to take it across a little bit further in the back. Good. Come through center, slowly come out of it, shake it out, and let's do that one more time. Left hand on top, right hand. You could uh, spin your stick around if needed, and press across. Hold here, scan your body, notice if you're centered, and then you can angle that back, and now turn your head a little bit. Excellent. Come through center, release, and shake it out. Bow and arrow on the other side. Our right leg is going to cross over the left. We're gripping the ground with the feet. That stick is right in line with our hips. Top hand, thumb facing down, lead with the hips, and press out. So you can always find which side is a little bit tighter than the other, and I absolutely love bow and arrow. I think it's one of the essential movements. <laughs> and then slowly come out of it, take a breath, and now let's go deeper into the stretch. Lead with the hips first, press out, pull that top arm, and now taking that tailbone, keeping it under, angle and look upward towards the ceiling. Try not to hold your breath, right? Continue to breathe, continue to grip the ground with your feet, and then slowly, slowly come out of it. Now, stick is in the center or slightly off center depending on how you feel. Right hand, thumb is up. Left hand now is going to come across and press out. So, hip hinging forward, I'm going to push that left arm cross towards the right, and then that top right arm is going to pull back. I'm activating that left there. Then I could kind of draw it in a little bit and out. Perfect. Hold. You could move the neck if you'd like. I always like doing that. Anytime you can mobilize the neck, I feel like it frees up the shoulders. Let's do one more. Hip hinge, push across, maintain the balance through your hip line, and then angle, hold. Deep breath in and out. And then when you're ready, slowly come out of your stretch. Shake it out. We're going to take our stick now to the lower back. Palms are going to face forward. Before we go into a full slap shot, we're going to go slightly wider than the stance we were just in. Hip hinge forward. Now this right side is going to come across and hook to the floor where I can comfortably. So I haven't shifted into the legs yet. I want you to focus now on that front line through the pectoral muscles into the head of the shoulder and bicep down into the forearm and looking upward towards the ceiling and then down to the floor. Again, upward towards the ceiling and then down to the floor. Staying low, we release and then come across to the other side. Same thing, taking notes on what side feels different. Eyes lead the head. Focus on your breath. All right, we're winding down now. Let's do one more. Come through center. Take a moment, push into the legs, come up, shake it out. Now we're going to go into our slap shot. Coming out wider, hip hinge forward. Let's take the right side over to the left where you can comfortably. And now this right knee is going to bend and I'm going to lengthen that left leg. Those toes are facing forward, getting a deeper stretch now into that front line. So I'm pushing back rather than going into the ball of the foot. My foot stays nice and flat. And then come out of it, glide over to the other side. Hold here. Let's glide back. 
Look up towards the ceiling. Breathe. Hold here. Four counts. Hold one, two, three. On four, glide over to the other side. Pause here for a moment. Shift into both knees soft. Come out of it. Heel toe in for a second before we do the other side. And shake it out. Nicely done. We're going to go wide again to where you're comfortable. Everybody's different. Hip hinge, this left side comes across to the right. And now deep bend into that left knee, lengthening that right leg. And again, you're only going to where you're comfortable. Hold here. Then glide over to the other side. So again, you're feeling grounded. Switch. Bend again. Hold. Four counts. Hold one, two, three. On four, shift, push into the feet. Hold. Take a moment, soften into both knees. Heel, toe, through center. One last stretch. We're just going to take a moment and go into regular bow and arrow to finish. Taking my stick over to the right side. Now my hip line, I'm going to go a little bit wider than hip width here. Left hand, right hand, send the hips out first and really work into this bow and arrow. So as you can see, I could kind of take my chest forward, but I'm not jutting my chin forward. Hold, slowly come out of it, good. Last one, other side, take a breath, reach with the right hand, bottom left hand towards the stick, press out with the hips first. So you should feel pretty loose and comfortable in this bow and arrow at this point. Hold for another breath or two, and then slowly, out of it. Well, thank you so much for joining me for class today. I'm at KellsBells88 on Instagram. And remember to check out Stick Mobility's YouTube channel and their Movement Made Better podcast, which you can listen to on Spotify and Apple. And I will see you next Tuesday. Always open to feedback, so please comment in the video below or DM me. Thanks, and I'll see you again.